as I've uh, travelled around, many people and churches and ministers say to me, Hayley, how, how do we grow? How, how do we uh, grow as a church community? And it's interesting, isn't it? That the church, there's no recipe, there's no template for it. It is a mystery. And you and I get to participate in the mystery of the gospel, of the resurrection of the living Christ Jesus. And church is our expression of that. Church is a mystery. And we disgrace this mystery when we try and put it into a box, when we try and put a formula into it, when we try and move it to be part of our image. How churches grow is not a formula that can be copied and pasted around our country or our nation. But what it is, is a mystery. It's an expression of God's grace and love, or at least it's meant to be. It's an opportunity where gathered communities who love Christ come together and provide an opportunity for others to find out, to explore more about him. We should always stand in awe of the mystery of the church. We should admire it in all its beauty. We should stand and ponder and look at God's amazing beauty in the church. And over the years, I've had the privilege of visiting many churches, serving in some. And over the years, I've learned several things about growing churches. And by growing churches, I don't mean that they are moving from a small number to a huge number of believers, although I've seen that happen. What I'm saying is, as a growing church, is a church that is growing in influence in its community. That is seeing people come to know Jesus for the first time from no church background. That are transforming and redeeming their communities with the transforming power of Jesus Christ. And there are some similar things that all these churches have in common. Let's explore some of those together now. One of the first lessons I see from growing churches, churches that are influencing their community and seeing people come to know Jesus, is that they believe in miracles and act accordingly. This is fascinating, isn't it? We see this in the book of Acts. They didn't just proclaim the word of God, they proclaimed in their actions, in miracles, and therefore it shifted. They were expecting God to move. They knew miracles could happen, and therefore they lived and breathed and moved in an expectation that God would provide, God would do a miracle. This is a big game changer for ministers and churches to believe that the Holy Spirit is always about doing something. The Holy Spirit is always moving in amidst our church community and therefore there's an overspill into the community that the church finds itself in. As a result of this believing that the Holy Spirit is in amongst us and about to do something and will do something, there's almost an, a bigger expectation. Churches that believe in miracles almost have a boldness in their worship and therefore they take risks in worship and community engagement. They don't fear failure. This is a biggie for me, the second lesson that I've learned. All churches that are growing and impacting their community are devoted to prayer. Their leaders are devoted to prayer. 
We can't get away from this. It breaks my heart every time I go to a church and they say we want to grow, we want to see God move. And yet prayer is a few minutes just before a service or a prayer gathering during a week only gets three people. Leadership teams should be praying. Ministers should be praying, seeking God for their community. This doesn't need to be dull or boring, sitting in a cold room in a circle, waiting for someone to say something and loads of awkward silences. Prayer is exciting. Prayer is engaging in the very heart of God. Go on a prayer walk around your streets in which the church is. Pray over Zoom, WhatsApp, Facebook, however it is. Be creative, draw, be prophetic, proclaim, intercede for your church community. It's so important. Nothing happens in the kingdom of God without prayer. We see this in the life of Jesus. If Jesus needed to seek the will of the Father... So do we. Seek a vision in prayer for your community. I believe it's a minister's, leader's role in a church to cultivate an attitude of prayer. To cultivate um, an environment in which prayer flourishes for individuals. Invest time in it. Ministers, leaders of churches sometimes are so busy in doing church, we forget to lay before um, God. We forget to hang out with God, seek his heart. I want to encourage every church leader, every minister to devote the first hour of your working day to seeking God in prayer. Prayer is the means by which God's people engage with God's heart and God's mission. Don't let it be a sideline or an add-on. Make it the main thing. The other lesson from churches, communities, uh, missional examples that are experiencing uh, growth, experiencing people come to faith, is that of preaching and teaching. Good, solid, biblical teaching and preaching. This is what Paul talks to Timothy about, doesn't he? He he talks in presses that preach the word in season and out of season. But it needs to be good and biblical teaching. Not just what people want to hear, not ear tickling. Preaching that challenges, that inspires, that engages, that enables congregations to take seriously the mission of God in their everyday life and it's a challenge it's a challenge for us as ministers to protect our pulpits as such to make sure that what we're preaching is sound biblically that is inspired by the holy spirit make sure that you invite other voices into your church community to inspire godly men and women that can equip your church and also as ministers as leaders get yourself trained up and continue to be continually formed in your preaching and your teaching some of that will be in traditional forms of preaching and teaching and some will be really creative ways of engaging the heart of God in expounding his word and his teaching in new and creative ways. We as an association here in South Wales would love to walk with you uh, in your teaching and preaching ministry, however creative or traditional that is. If you're sitting here and thinking it was a long time since I ever trained, uh, I might need a refresher, I need to be re-inspired. Or maybe you're listening to this and thinking I've had no formal forms of ministerial training i'm just doing my best your best is great but let's give god more let's let's hunger to be the best preachers the best teachers the best communicators in a creative way of god's word i know here in south wales we have a brilliant establishment 
in the South Wales Baptist College where you can pop in uh, once a month uh, and, and be formed, be inspired by others who are seeking to find out what good biblical teaching is. The other thing that I've noticed in growing churches is there is a good leadership team. Team is essential. A strong team is key. A strong leader is necessary, but not sufficient for a church to sustain growth and see transformation in its community. A team brings together all those who are loyal to God and are faithful in seeing his miracles outworked in their community, expressing his love and grace to others. A team must be founded on trust of God and nothing else. A team must be inspired and encouraged by seeking God's heart in mission. Having a good team enables you to watch over each other biblically, to care for each other, to love each other as you minister together. A congregation, a community always reflects the relationships they see formed in a leadership team. One of the things I learned very early on in my pastoral ministry was to um, cultivate team. And by doing that, we set aside as a team to pray every week together. We would also uh, start leadership meetings with a meal, not talking about church stuff, but relating, eating together, being together, enjoying each other's company, respecting the Holy Spirit working in each of us individually. And when we invest, in those relationships, when we invest in team ministry in that way, when we face difficulties, which we will, when we're being challenged, which we will be, when we don't see eye to eye and don't agree, we're able to wrestle with it in a biblical way. We're able to come to it in a different way, in a way that honours God. Why? Because we love each other. Why? Because we care. Why? Because we've invested time together. We know each other. Also, that's been a benefit for times when I've kind of had a way out there idea. Churches are more willing to work with leaders that they know and trust rather than leaders that are distant and just chuck out ideas. Invest in a strong leadership team. Another key factor of growing churches is they integrate new people quickly. One of the privileges and joys of visiting churches is it's good when you're not able to see who's been there five minutes and who's been there 50 years. But there's a sense of gathering in, a sense of family, a sense of belonging. There's not these long steps and hurdles to jump over in order to get involved, in order to be. Obviously, we need to test maturity and we do that through church membership in our traditional Baptist contexts. But let's encourage the gifts of everyone that's in our community. Enable them to belong, to express their gifts. It's a key to fruitfulness in ministry. Another key to growing churches, churches that see transformation or growth in their communities, is they love their community. Not just that they love their church community, but they love the community they're in. And in doing so, they go out of their way, they're intentional to serve and be with their community. Churches that are seeing uh, people come to faith in their community are investing in their community. They're being school governors, they're interested in the council, they do the community litter picks, they're out and about in the local shops and community. Engage in the community where you are, reflecting God's grace in everything you do. Another key is that of churches that are seeing people come to faith, that are growing, 
are really key on their, their purpose. They exist not for themselves, but for the other. They exist to reach the next person. Focusing on evangelism being a part of what every member should do is a key to a growing church. Every ministry you have going on as a church should be focused on how are we connecting people to our Saviour? How are people knowing and experiencing and being given opportunity to live for Jesus? Invite people, connect people to Jesus. That's the purpose of everything you should be doing as a church is to connect people deeper or connect people for the first time in a relationship with God. And your church's mission field is where they spend their time. And therefore, energies of growing churches are spent on equipping people to be evangelists, to do mission and ministry in their everyday life, to be fruitful on their front line. For more information about how you can engage fruitfulness on your front line and create an every member mission mindset, head over to the London Institute of Contemporary Christianity. They've got resources there that you and your church can engage with immediately on fruitfulness in the front line. Another uh, key of growing churches is that they elevate their practice of giving. They teach practically and honestly on tithing and giving, but not just financially. They preach and emphasise a giving of your time, your tithe and your talents. I used to infuriate treasurers when I was a local minister. I used to say to my church, I'd rather you all gave me 10% of your time than 10% of your finances. Now, obviously, that's theologically wrong, um, but, but there's a key there, isn't there? Of giving isn't just about writing a cheque. Giving isn't just about finances. Finances are a big part of giving, but they're only one part of giving. Churches elevate members giving of their time and their talents. What are your members good at? Are they seeking to prioritise investing in your community? It's an essential part of fruitful discipleship to see how you can use your tired times and talents to bring about the kingdom of God, to invest in the kingdom of God where you are. And a final key of growing churches is things that I've noticed, is that growing churches make relationships with their denominations and other partners. There's something unique, there's something powerful about being accountable, walking with, aligning ourselves with our association here in the South Wales and our bigger, wider Baptist family and of course other organisations. Leaders and churches that intentionally seek out relationships of people who can walk alongside them speak prophetically into their situations, to hold them to account, to walk with, to troubleshoot with, to inspire, to be a sounding board, focusing on the strengths of working within our structures is a really positive thing. Now don't get me wrong, I understand sometimes our structures frustrate us, but we need to be intentional about walking with each other, partnering in mission and ministry, partnering in the sharing of the gospel. If you would like to explore any of these lessons from growing churches uh, further, then please do get in touch with us here at the association. We would love to walk with you as you journey to impact your church and community with the transforming power of Jesus Christ.